I guess I'm all set. <laughs> Awkward equipment everywhere. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. This is going to be uh, the report or not report session on the orchids I recently got from Le Cocodin in Germany. Uh, that was my birthday haul and a haul I am very, very satisfied with the quality and size and prices on the uh, orchids that I got. So, um, look, it's a really, really nice orchid nursery out here in Europe. Um, so, uh, if you haven't tried them out, uh, yeah, I would encourage you to do so. I mean, I don't think you will be unsatisfied or anything. Um, just keep in mind that uh, they usually do their um, a couple of uh, imports from Brazil, uh, which they call Brazilian Import October. Yeah, whatever. You can go and check out the website um, all by yourself in the menu. I think this was the uh, June, June uh, Brazilian import, yeah, and this is July, but never mind. Uh, they still had a couple of plants left, obviously. Mm. But, well, get to the point, yeah, uh, the thing is that, in most cases, they arrive bare-rooted uh, to the nursery, and the nursery, I assume, put them up with bad, lousy roots, yeah, and in many cases, a couple of new short ones coming. Uh, into bark. Yeah, this kind of bark, always the same kind of bark, medium grade bark, in ugly brownish plastic pots. Since they are well aware that uh, the buyers are gonna repart them quite um, shortly afterwards, so they don't need to uh, put down a lot of money or energy to the setup. Most of my previous ordered uh, orchids from them arrived with few or no <laughs> good roots at all. I lost part of them. I transitioned into semi hydroponics since that is the very best timing to do so when new roots are emerging, as in this case. So, um, yeah, they're still alive. Most part of the orchids I ever ordered from Lucke still alive a couple of years later. So, um, it's not as bad as it seems. Yeah, anyway, let's just look at it. So I don't really expect its roots to be alive. Yeah? And they aren't. But as I said, um, they never ship orchids without um, some new growth coming. So there will soon be a couple of new roots. As you can see, a little teeny weeny root coming. So I can just um, start digging into this root system on this gorgeous little Lelia jongiana. Hippo. Nowadays we're classified into Cattleya Alliance, of course, but um, nonetheless, it's a very rare species, Cattleya. It almost has been uh, extincted for a long period of time, about around 100 years' time. Couldn't be found anywhere. Uh, kind of a distinctive shape of the flowers, and especially the shape of the lip. Looks a little bit like a gorgeous, frilly trumpet, so... Um, Highly fragrant, grows in Brazil, yay, Brazilian import. <laughs> uh, a bit um, cooler to hot uh, grower, cool to hot grower, so I'm not entirely sure how to keep this one uh, yet, but uh, but maybe, um, yeah, we shall see about it. <clears throat> maybe I'll decide as we proceed here. There's a good tool, a small guy. Let's see too bad the uh, tools are uh, properly disinfected before you use them. So, in case I forgot it last time I reported, never know. I'm only human. Stuff happens. Um, this one is flowering size, 27-ish euro. And that's not a high price for this very, very, very uncommon orchid. Um, I always like to peel. That's my favorite occupation. I'll see. I don't want to have, yeah, look. I don't want to have far too much, uh, far too many sheaths down here in case um, I'll put it into some hydro or such or any kind of uh, humid position as for in my uh, cultivation cabinet, which keeps a range of 60 to 92 percent humidity. So, anyway. I think I know what I'm going to do with this guy. Uh, the 
this one I, <laughs> I was most concerned about. So I went to, yay, YouTube, of course. Yeah, just like you guys. Go on and watch YouTube channels. So I searched Jonghiana, Jonghiana, whatever, how it's pronounced, and found Todd's Tropicals. Yeah, I think I subscri I'm subscribing to that channel, so. Um, he had, or has got, a Jonghiana. And he reported it in a certain way. So the thought was to find several of channels with loads of different growers who uh, grows them in uh, their Jonghianas in uh, different kinds of setups. But I, I couldn't find <laughs> more than Todd's Tropicals. Ah, nothing wrong with that. It's just, uh, yeah, I need a little bit more um, diversity uh, <clears throat> so I could decide. But nonetheless, um, and I also found uh, Sunshine Lady Orchids. I'm also subscribing to that channel. Um, she uh, showed hers in bloom, and, and she, on the other hand, <laughs> was thanking Todd's Tropical <laughs> for letting her know how to deal with her orchid. And now it was in bloom, of course, she got into bloom. So, yeah, not many options, but I will do what he did. So, yes, and switch trays to a clean one, disinfected one. So I went to the garden center just the other day and got myself a couple of more 10 to 11 centimeter wide clay pots, four inches. And I let them soak into a bucket of water 24 hours. That guy, yeah, it was funny. He, um, he's a little bit of gravel, but um, I found a little bit outside. Yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> The earth is full of gravel, rocks, so to the bottom, why not? And that guy is using a little bit of charcoal as well, pieces. And unfortunately, he used a little bit of bark as well into the mixture. I'm going to do something else, something different, why not? And I believe that this is going to be part, part one out of two since I already realized that this video is going to be very long. If I'm going to include all of the orchids I've got in it, so that's not going to happen. It will be um, approaching next morning when you watch this video to the end. And I really don't want to rush through them. It should be uh, done carefully without any rush. Well, I've uh, decided to exclusively pot this gorgeous little gal or boy up in uh, inorganic medium. Solid inorganic medium. Yes. I used to watch uh, Rick L's channel uh, time from time to time. Back in the days. Um, <laughs> back in the days. A couple of years ago, yeah, to be exact. And he was using uh, <laughs> gravel, rocks, anything. Couple of slow release fertilizer, why not? A little bit of charcoal and another layer of this and a little layer of rocks and another layer and let's not forget the orchid. <laughs> so this is what's gonna happen. Um news growth here and I am gonna get rid of a little bit more of this sheath so it will be easier for the new roots to uh, uh, pierce through and go down, yeah? But yeah, I don't think <laughs> the sheath will dry out in the cabinet anyway, but there's a good chance on them to um, rot and uh, stay soggy and cause some rotting. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's another option. Sorry, but it is. So, let's not break it, you know, shall we? So, so uh, let's just uh, leave this. It needs the support, I believe, up here. So, anyway, it's just, um, <laughs> yeah, it's part of like this, yeah. Charcoal will hold a little bit of moisture and 
the perlite will certainly will and at the same time keep it airy so and all this amount of gravel will actually keep the moisture down a bit so just like in yeah just, just like growing in semi hydroponics yeah. so that's my idea so it was almost like Todd's Tropicals reporting but my own edition <laughs> so let us wait for the new roots to go down and there will certainly be no uh, or very little watering to it just a little spraying around the uh, edges I suppose for starters and she will be kept inside the cabinet over there to the right so now she's done let's clean up this mess and jump right over to the next orchid and um, this one I think is gonna be um, treated hmm wet damp moss I haven't yet um, watered it so um, but you can see in active growth still uh, 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 uh. hmm all been bent upwards <laughs> oh 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 um so it's kind of um <clears throat> adapted to the sitting in this uh, damp medium but um yeah i guess you already know what i have got in store for it <clears throat> semi hydroponics yeah yeah oh yeah you discover stuff when you look it's a new growth um covered with sheath Oh no, it's uh oh yeah, goodbye. So that was a bad 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 But uh here's something else Hmm Little eye coming Hmm I wonder if it's been a little bit too damp for it. Um, or has it? Ah, as you can see, a division, and this growth uh, was kind of weak, and so it broke. Here's another one coming, therefore. So it's really, <laughs> it's always very exciting to uh, <laughs> get them out of the pots. <laughs> it's always something funny happening well let's just get uh get rid of the uh, obviously dead ones so we don't need them anyway so um sometimes i just uh <laughs> put a whole lot down moss and all <laughs> into a uh semi hydroponic setup and I yeah the next year I get rid of the moss and the orchid had all the time it needed to settle and create another new root system so and it worked out totally fine in every case I assume uh, maybe one one or two cases it didn't work but most of the cases was totally totally fine to do uh, so um so um, this one is going to produce, I believe, a couple of new roots still. There's a good one here coming. And here, yeah, black root tip, but maybe. Doesn't matter, it's okay. Yeah. You see green root tips at least. So it's a good start. Maybe it's uh, on its way. So yes, let us clean off. No, we're not going to clean. We're just going to remove it and replace it with another one. Another tray. Clean tray. Ta-da! So here it is. Spray it a little bit just in case. So what about it now? Um, I prepared a little, <laughs> my favorite type of uh, pot, the flat bottom. No air cone, 
whatsoever. Uh, wick. Microfiber. Hm, I just cut it. <laughs> what comes next? A bit of lecker. Thoroughly washed and uh, 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 boiled. Always keep a few, just a few pieces of uh, charcoal as well. It's just a habit I have. As long as it feels great. Yeah, let's see now. This growth will duplicate itself. There will be another one next to it. For, or even from it, yeah. Um, there's an eye to the side. And this one is going to produce its next growth here, as you can see. So, uh, well, maybe here. Doot. Doot. There will be enough room. For maybe two years. That will be enough. Yes. So, this is going to be a little bit too dry for the root, so... That's why I'm going to add the gravel to the top. That's really aquarium sand. Cheap brand from uh, Hornbush. 25 kilograms for 13 euro, almost. That's a very, very good price. It's a bargain, really. Yes. So I learned that uh, loads of gravel to the top. They keep the moisture down and... It's good for the new roots to go down in it. It's proved to be quite beneficial. So, ah, uh, where's my goodly good steaks, yeah? I bet they're all finished. So, yeah, temporary sticks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just to hold it in place a bit. Until I find some new, decent barbecue steaks. Tie it on to it. And yeah, maybe this one as well. Yeah. For now. A little butterfly. For good luck. And uh, the little tag. It's infected now. So, that one's done. One of my um, regular white outside containers are going to be used. So, you don't need to see that one, I believe. This is the last orchid in this video. Can I see the orchid lead? Lovely one. So, of course, still sitting in. Loads of uh, moss and this cheap bleh, plastic bag, yay! Um, but uh, you can see it's in a really, really good, yeah, as it should be, really, really good and great growing stage. So I'm not going to disturb it, not at all, uh, yeah, a little bit, but not a total cleanup. I mean, you need to uh, repot these guys once a year anyway. That's how it works, so... Um, It's no big deal. It's probably already been reported. Look here, it's an old flower spike. So, uh, yeah, now I'm not confused anymore on where it puts out its flower spikes. So, yeah, it's a living proof of it. You see? And I'm going to replace a little bit of its moss. The loose parts. Um, it's not the very best quality moss. And it's a little bit of algae buildup. So, yes. That was last year's growth, yeah? Or even the year before. I figured this one was last year's growth and it's been blooming. So it likes to bloom. I really do hope that it likes to bloom even this year. Let's give him some decent light, shall we? Before he changes his mind. Yeah, you can see there's a tendency on it wanting to uh, create... A little spike even this year so let us play our cards right yeah 
now we've got three little eyes or oh, shall we say nubbins i'm not sure um on all of my get a certain type orchids for the moment so that's been a really really hot uh, spring so uh, yeah oh look at this root it's great it's great in a very very good growing stage totally totally damp medium so let us go like i'm all we always go new moss good type new zealand moss kind of good <laughs> let us just put it around it and give a bit of space to the front of course where the newest growth is since it's going to be in, in a clay pot and all she'll need a lot of stuff um i normally add a little bit of um slow release fertilizer but uh <laughs> I, don't, oops, I don't see how to do it in this case really just add a couple of pieces it doesn't matter I'm going to use a good fertilizer anyway for them. So, let's give it space to the front side, shall we? Now we can add a couple pieces. Not many, just a couple. It's okay. They're not so fussy and finicky. You can grow them in bark. And it's in a hydro. But when growing in bark, um, you should, uh, you need to dip water them quite often. So, in this case, I only need to um, put them into a saucer, put the little uh, clay pot there, stake the thing up, of course. Hmm, preferably to uh, its oldest growth, yeah, for stability, and add a little bit of water down there so it will soak up the water. Uh, the wicking properties of the uh, clay pot will be great. It is great. It's always great. So, uh, great to order clay pots from un uh, underneath, yeah? So a little saucer is good for it. I haven't started to um, fertilize my old ones all that much. Uh, they've only been watered for the last couple of weeks. It's better to wait, yeah? It's better to wait to order them until they reached almost the size of this one, this high. You can add a little bit of moisture to the surface, perhaps a few drops to the bottom, just to keep it a little bit damp. And then you uh, successively um, increase the amount of watering and come around uh, yeah, middle of August, uh, early September. And that's a real, real, real growing season and you can see them explode, really explode. And that's when they need the most fertilizer. That's at, at least my experience on these guys. And I've seen some good growing. Yeah, I really have been. So I'm on the right track. It's just, yeah, it's just the temperatures here, which aren't so great. We need, yeah, they need a little bit more warmth to put out characteristic eyes here. Little triangular formed eyes to the base where the flower spikes will be uh, emerging from. So that's how they grow these guys. But there are other varieties. For example, the uh, Cycnotches and um, Cycnodes, which will uh, put out the flower spikes from uh, the leaf joints here. Yeah, directly from the pseudobulb. <laughs> so it looks really funny when you, when they finally drop the leaves <laughs> and you can see the old spikes. Yeah, remains of the spikes, but anyway, that will be the video for today. <laughs> Look, it's a total mess here. Yeah, so I'm going to split this video up. It's going to be a little bit too long for you to watch, I believe, or maybe not. But anyway, I'm going to clean this mess up, and I hope you're going to join me in um, part two. So um, thank you for being here, and I really enjoy you being here, and yeah, subscribing to my channel, commenting, encourage me. <laughs> Lovely comments, cheerful ones, and sometimes not cheerful ones, but yeah, everything is welcome. So in many cases, it will help and help others as well. So yeah, please do so. And 
give it a thumbs up if you like this video. So we should talk soon. Yeah, enough talk. <laughs> bye bye, guys. Yeah.